Hello everybody, my name is Malcolm Leach, I'm Paul Tipton's Sales and Marketing Manager and I'm here talking with Paul regarding his flagship restorative dentistry course which lasts one year. Okay. Paul, two and a half thousand dentists have gone through this course, why should dentists come on this programme? Well the programme is aimed at dentists from all different uh, classes I think in all different areas of their professional career. The uh, young dentist who maybe feels he's not been as adequately trained as he'd like to at to university would benefit from coming on the course so he doesn't make so many mistakes when he goes into practice. Um, also the intermediate dentist, the dentist who is in practice at the moment would benefit from potentially gaining a new position. We have many many of our alumni that have got into much better uh, jobs throughout the country because of the fact that they've been on our training courses. Uh, of course, not only is there uh, an increase in the knowledge, the practical skills, but it's a huge confidence builder. And not only does that come across when applying for other doc jobs, but also when talking to patients. And then finally, we've got the experienced dentist. And I suppose that offers a complete new uh, role for them. Um, in this day and age of increased litigation, um, many, many dentists are performing what you would call probably defensive dentistry and not doing some of the cases they'd like to do. Um, an experienced dentist who could come on the course would learn with us some of the more difficult aspects of treatment planning and give them the confidence and the increased knowledge of latest uh, techniques so that potentially they would avoid the pitfalls of litigation. Okay Paul, you obviously have strong beliefs and uh, you structured this course in a certain way for maximum impact and benefit. Could you tell me a little bit more about that please? Yes, um, we've been running the course now I think for 21 years. And I think through that time nearly 3,000 dentists have been through the programme with us. And it all started off back in 1987-1989 when I went down to the Eastman and did a two year master's degree at the Eastman. And that really set me up in my practice for hopefully the rest of my life. And as such I've decided that I wanted to take the Eastman philosophy, which was based on in fact a lot of the work done in Michigan University over in the States, and then bring that up to uh, the north of England and back down to London again, now we're doing some courses in London and teach them that philosophy and try to make it not only a scientific philosophy but also one which the dentist could use in everyday practice. So my aim was to combine the scientific knowledge, the scientific relevance with the clinical skills but also give the uh, dentist a lot more uh, marketing and business ideas so he could develop his practice, talk to his patients and maximise his income a lot more. And what topics are covered on the course? We start off with occlusion. Occlusion is the basis of dentistry. Uh, without knowing occlusion, you can never really get to grips with difficult cases. Uh, occlusion is what makes cases succeed and cases fail. So we have four days of solid occlusion, starting off with the principles of occlusion, uh, going into the clinic in the afternoon to start taking Facebook registrations on each other, uh, jaw manipulations, jaw registrations. We start romancing the condyles whether that's a concept you've heard of or not, but you'll soon get to know what I mean about that. Making sure the condyles are in their correct position before we do any restorative work. Uh, the second day follows on with occlusal examination procedures, both lectures and practicals. We then move on to the tricky subject of articulators. Articulators is something that you really need to know about because the articulator can be your best friend. It can be an instrument that can earn you a lot of money and also an instrument which makes your life a lot easier. So we have some theory and practical on that. Then the fourth day of the occlusion section, we go into temporal mandibular joint problems, occlusal splints, and all the delegates get to make an occlusal splint on each other. So that's the first part of the course, which is mostly split up into different segments, and occlusion being the uh, most important primary one. And uh, what follows on after occlusion, Paul? Once we've been through the occlusion part, then we start to break up the restorative dentistry into different segments. And we start to go through things like veneers, smile design, uh, a 
amalgams, amalgam bonding, different post situations, and how we uh, restore root filled teeth. We have a day on endodontics, a day on perio, and these aren't just lecture days, these are all practical days as well. Um, we go through composites, anterior posterior composites, uh, dealing with things like the C factor, looking at different bonding. My preference is for fourth generation bonding. I know it's a little bit more difficult to do, but it by far gives you the very best bond. Uh, and then we end up with bridge design and bridge preparations. We always end up with that day because I feel that's a real, real good way to finish the course. And teach you things like fixed movables, bridge design based on gold copings, the use of uh, Maryland retainers, etc. And when you should do which sort of bridge in what situation. And I know you're very keen on uh, the relationship between the dentist and the technician. What have you got there and for, uh, for, the, for that? Um, very much one of the big parts again of my course down at the Eastman. I'm sorry to keep on going back to you about that, but it was such an important part of my career and my training. Uh, the important part there was that we got to do our own lab work. Now some people might find that a bind, but when you're doing your own lab work, you start to understand just some of the problems that you get as a dentist and as a technician. So you find both roles, you do both roles combined. And you have to do things like trim your own dyes. Now I don't know if you've ever trimmed your own dye, but as soon as you start to trim your own dyes, you start to see where is the margin. So it means that your preparations have to be better, it means that your impressions have to be better, so you can actually see those margins. The next thing that comes up is space. Um, during our course at the Eastburn, we had to make approximately 50 units of lab work for patients. And many of those were crowns and porcelain infused to metal crowns. And straight away you start to look and see some of the problems that technicians have when you don't give them enough space. So all through the course we have a very large laboratory uh, treatment uh, protocol. We uh, discuss with the technician, the technician comes in from many, many of our sessions and we try to teach you some of the technical parts uh, of dentistry as well. And that liaison, that relationship between the dental technician and yourselves, which is so paramount. Remember, you're the leader of the team. You're the person that has to dictate how JIP will go. And therefore, you have to understand all the problems the technician has, all the solutions, so he can work with you as a partnership basis. And Paul, you've um, handpicked your team to help present this course. Can you tell me uh, something about your lecturers helping with you? Certainly. Um, most of my lecturers have been involved with the courses for many years. Um, they've been through my training academy. Some of them have gone on to bigger and better things. They've done their MSCs. They've gone on to specialist um, positions themselves. Um, we have Andrew Watson, who's a specialist in endodontics. Uh, Amit Patel, specialist in perio. Um, Dr. Ibrahim Hussain, who's got a master's degree in implantology. Uh, we also have Joran Erda. He comes in from Sweden. He was one of the original dentists that worked in the Branemark Clinic with uh, Professor Branemark. Uh, again, he's a, an implant prosthodontist and surgeon. Um, we have a team of Richard Malek, Adam Toft, again with their master's degrees, who've been through my training program, who also um, help me with the practical sides. And Paul, this is a 14-day uh, course of, of one-day modules. Can a dentist choose which day they attend? We don't allow that, no. It's important that we go through all the methodology. We find that if somebody just attends on one day, then they're catching up from the previous days. The other dentists on the course obviously understand a lot more than they tend to. Um, so it's not applicable for uh, dentists to chop and choose and change which day they want to do. Um, we try to run the days over uh, two, three or four different uh, days during the week so it offers maximum flexibility for people uh, and if you do miss a day you can come on different days and catch up. But it's a one year course and it's important you know that you are coming on a one year restorative course, not a, a one day course. And where, where are the courses held? Courses are held uh, starting off in Manchester, that's my hometown, that's my uh, own venue. And from then we've expanded into Leeds, so we do a course in Leeds and also down in London. 
the um, Manchester course is based partly in Manchester and partly in Leeds. So the first four days of the course where the clinical aspects are done, we go over to my clinic in Leeds uh, and then we come back to Manchester for the uh, non-clinical days, the days that don't involve the surgeries. And a final question, Paul, uh, we have a number of inquiries from, from abroad, uh, are they welcome on your course and does a dentist have to be qualified to come along? Um, the answer to that is yes, of course they're, they're welcome, um, dentists qualified from abroad, um, we'd love to see them, no problem whatsoever, and teach them the methodology from the uh, Tipton Academies. Uh, when it comes to being qualified, yes, the, the dentist realistically has to be qualified. And ideally, we'd like them to have been through their VT program, their training program, and then they have two options. They can either come straight on the course from the VT program. Um, some dentists feel that they'd like to get in a little bit more experience in dentistry, first of all, make a few mistakes, as it were, and then come on the course. Um, so it doesn't really matter, either straight from VT or one to two years after VT once they've just got a little bit of a handle on what clinical dentistry is about. And at that stage, we can get them, we can mould them, we can really turn them into what they want to be. It's important that we work with the dentist and find out what they want, uh, what their career pathways to be, and then we can help them achieve that career pathway. All right, thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. And guys, uh, if you wish to book for this course, please go on to our website www.tipsandtraining.co.uk and you can register online. Thank you very much.